was an eventful okay. first yeah. round. Here is where Rigandau would hit the canvas. Now, he gets nailed with a left hand that's kind of on the back of the head. And that, whether that would be knocked down, who knows? But he was hit several times mm -hmm. while on the mat, which, of course, could have also created a point deduction or disqualification of Casemiro. And uh, Rigandau complaining about being hit behind the head, which, in fact, he was. And we'll get a look at it again, Abner. Yeah, there was a punch behind the head. But then the punches afterwards while he was down, you know, that could have been the punch that hurt him, <laughs> to be honest, because Rigandau out he was hurt once he got up and i do not want to intimate that casemiro is by any means a dirty fighter he has been penalized two points in the past against Luis Lazarte for punching to the back of the head and rigan down not quite down but again ancient history already al this is round number two and Casemiro continues to apply the pressure as expected. Yeah, and look at that pressure that Casemiro's giving. But then again, Brigandel's is not throwing that jab to stop Casemiro from coming in. And Casemiro unloading that right uppercut. Oh, there's a sniper like straight left hand down the middle by Brigandel. He is always dangerous with that counter left, whether it's an uppercut or a straight left. And Casemiro, while he's emboldened, uh, Fight needs to remember that. Regandel's only loss came against Vasily Lomachenko, the only pro matchup in boxing history, pairing two time Olympic gold medalists. The fight took place at 130, well over Regandel's best weight. In fact, he thinks his best weight is the one he's competing in right now. Time will tell. And boy, another beautifully executed left hand by Regandel. That's two in a row, and you look at look at the tempo now. Casemiro being more more relaxed, he's, he's he's not going in as crazy as as he was in the earlier rounds. And that footwork now on display by Rigandau. A minute and a half gone here in the second. Counter right upstairs by Rigandau. This is more movement early than I even would have anticipated from Rigandau. And the question you have to ask yourself is, can he continue this throughout the entire fight? And, and was it because of what we witnessed in that first round by Casemiro? The, the pressure that he put on? So. You know why? Because he started it right at the beginning. So I, I, I think it was, he had this in mind. Mm -hmm. A minute left in the second. He's getting the respect, you know. Rigandau, he got the respect right now. Now the tempo. Look, look at the tempo right now. It's really calm. Rigandau wants it now. And Rigandau's having a strong second round with that left hand after the counter to the midsection. See, he's got more time to think now. Yep. He's in the outside. He's waiting for the right side. Oh, beautiful lead left hook to the liver by Casemiro. It was what Casemiro was doing in the first round, in the first, and then in the beginning of the second one. That is going to give Rigandau's problems. Right now, I think it's Rigandau. Rigandau's doing a good job of juicing the whole ring. And it was Casemiro who told Rigandau to leave his bicycle at home. The crowd here in Carson wishes the same thing, but it's the sweet science. It's about hitting and not getting hit. Rigandau, one of the best. Well, for the first time tonight, we will have a chance to take a look at the keys to victory. And we will start with Rigandau. Um, he does not want to be on the inside as he was against Julio Ceja. And he needs to keep this fight, though, in the center of the ring and not get caught on the ropes. Now, he can hurt Casemiro with a big counter left hand, and we've seen him throw that punch already. As for Casemiro, 40% uh, of his landed punches are body shots. He needs to use that against the 40-year-old. We saw one big left hook down there. He has a powerful uppercut, and it could be a big weapon in this fight. His right hand is a devastating weapon, and he used it to KO the last lefty that he faced. That lefty being... Zolani Tete, who...
Casemiro defeated to become Bantamweight belt holder. He, in fact, has won titles in three weight classes, having held major belts at 108 in 2012, 112 in 2016, and then winning the 118-pound title in 2019. And, you know, Zelani Tete is kind of Rigondeau light. He's very similar to Rigondeau yes, as a boxer, so it was a, 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 a similar test. And Casemiro was able to get him with some right hands. Yeah, Casemiro, the fourth Filipino fighter to win titles in three weight classes. As he hunts down Rigondeau. And switches to lefty yeah. Casemiro. Interesting. And what's also interesting for Casemiro is that he's carried his punching power with him as he's moved up in weight. I like what Casemiro did, did there a second ago. He switched to lefty. You know, you got to give different angles, different tricks to Rigondeau. I mean, he's going to continue to do that all night. But the question is, like you said, well, can he do that for 12 yeah. rounds? Well, this is the old Rigondeau. Mm -hmm. The one that we saw in the old days in this crowd. Oh, you don't mean loving. the 40-year-old? No, I mean the old. in the old oh, days. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the former <laughs> Rigondeau. This is the third round. You can still get away with this. Casemiro has to keep pressuring, keep pressuring, go for the body, don't go for the head. And the question here is going to be how much Rigondeau can punch from this posture. If he can throw punches and counter punch, then of course he can win rounds, but he has to throw punches as Great well. Point. Great point. If you're just moving and Casemiro is the one putting the pressure, even if he's missing, yeah. as a judge, I think they'll give him a round. And here's what Casemiro is not doing at all. He is not cutting off the ring at all against uh, Rigondeau. He's following him around the ring. It's not as easy as it looks. No, I'm telling from experience because they don't want to clip. I, I did fight Rigondeau and that, and that was in 2003. Yeah. Pan Am Games. I was 17 years old. The man was close to his 30s. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, uh, same thing, same scenario. He was moving all around the ring. I couldn't, I couldn't catch him. And it's three, three rounds. So Casemiro has 12 rounds. Well, nine now. Final 20 seconds of the third round in which Rigondeaux chewed up a lot of real estate. Well, Raul Marquez and Alejandro Luna call the action in Spanish for every Showtime Championship boxing event. You can hit the SAP button on your TV if you'd like to hear our broadcast in Espanol tonight. And Raul's son, Giovanni Marquez. Well, earlier today, he defeated Carlos Hernandez by decision in the finals of the 2021 Golden Gloves National Tournament of Champions in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He won the 152-pound division, and he was also named the outstanding fighter at the tournament. Congratulations, Giovanni Marquez and proud Papa Raul. And we look forward to seeing Giovanni Marquez in a Showtime Championship boxing ring sooner than later. Raul, a former world champion in his own right, proud of his son. La Boca. La Boca. Get over there. The bell and round four, and when it comes to judging about of this nature with all of that running in the uh, the last round, it, wow. the judges are in their keep right now. Don't ask. <laughs> this is tough. And, you know, I remember I mentioned that Casemiro was hoping work rate would help him. He's only thrown 69 punches in this uh, fight, and part of the reason is just catching uh, Rigondeau is a tough one. Rigondeau himself has only thrown 61. And I think it's about being Watch patient now for Casemiro. You gotta wait for the right time to let go of the, the right hand, which he still hasn't. Yeah. And Casemiro attempting to make that investment to the body, as you've mentioned as well, but off balance throwing that left hand. But the investment to the body will be one way if you can tag him after to slow him down. Oh, and Rigondeau comes back. They both throw that, that body shot at the same time. But yeah, you're right. He's setting up that left hook. But he's got to come with the straight right hand or straight to the body. Speaking of Casemiro.
less movement from Ringendahl in the last minute and a half or two minutes of this fight. Whether that continues, we'll see. Lead left hand by Rigondeaux. Watch the camera, guy. Minute and a half left here in the fourth. Casemiro trying to find a way to close the distance without being countered by one of the best counter punchers in the sport. That left hand is always ready for Rigondeaux, and he's shown us that he can strike quickly with that punch. Well, he can, but if you don't keep him busy, at least with the jab from Casemiro, right. I mean, he's, he's going to have fun throwing that left, but Casemiro has to at least touch him with that left. Yeah, yeah you know, there's a misnomer yeah. that you don't jab against lefties. You do jab against yeah, lefties course, for a lot of reasons. For many reasons, you, you know, you want to keep him busy, keep that hand entertained. Although, against southpaws, it can be said that it's likely to be less effective, it right? It may, but it helps, as Abner put yeah, it, it helps I mean, things up. Exactly. Yeah, it's the main Set the table. Yeah. And it may not land a lot. Yeah. And, and the feints not coming from Rigging out. Here's the interesting sure. thing. The power puncher Casemiro is biting on those feints.